in a project somewhat reminiscent of some of my earlier works involving counter-rotating systems, like the Otis Carr Levity Disc, a dual counter-rotating homopolar motor, and of course this contra contraption, and this one, which was a mercury-filled copper tube device. A common theme has emerged from my many projects over the years. Once upon a time, I called it the universal pattern. It's a, unif it's a unified field involving two counter-rotating vortexes nested within each other. One revolves around a negative pole and the other a positive. At its smallest level, it's composed of twin etheric vorte vortices within the zero-point field. Specific vibrations within the ether cause the twin vortices to emerge. In isomatics like capacity, so-called physical matter is made manifest. The twin vortices create twin counter-rotating torsion fields that you might say are entangled with each other. So with all of this in mind, what am I actually trying to do? You might ask. With my current device, well, I'm simply trying at this point to make an electric motor and a dual counter-rotating gyroscope one in the same device as one in the same device. This double gyro doesn't feature hollow tubes filled with liquid mercury though, but it's possibly a precursor to such a device or somewhat similar devices. It's basically a pulse motor using brief pulses of repulsion to achieve dual rotation. I use a slip ring and a special commutator to achieve the right timing of the pulses. Now I could have made this device in a number of different ways. One option would have been to have the coils and the magnets rotated 90 degrees and then I could have stacked two gyros of the same size on top of each other. A third option would have been to use C-shaped magnets to reach the two poles of the electromagnets in a setup similar to the Otis Car device. A fourth option would have been to use much more than three coils and three magnets. I could have also alternated the pulses between attraction and repulsion for perhaps greater speed. A fifth option on the more speculative side would have been to use two rotten coils and pulse them somewhat out of phase with, the, with each other. Have the two coils mounted so they can counter rotate around the same axis and run pulse DC in the opposite directions or polarity within the two coils and out of phase somewhat to cause rotation. The right frequency of DC would be critical in such a setup, but dual counter rotation using the right frequency has already been demonstrated with cymatics using sounds in Hans Jenny's experiments. So I surmise such a thing is possible with electricity as well. So yeah, just a few more things um, that I wanted to say. Uh, with pulsing the coils, like I could capture the back EMF in some capacity, or I could short out the coils between pulses so that the beat, so that the back EMF is uh, um, recycled. I guess you could call it sort of in a Joseph uh, Newman type uh, setup. But then with capturing back EMF, there, there's also similarities with the um, the John Bedini. Um, set up and then with Pulse DC as well uh, this kind of ties in with Tesla's um, discoveries of radiant um, electricity with his uh, high voltage pulse systems and uh, you know this goes into the um, the Tesla coils transmitting electricity and different experiments um, a lot of having been recreated by Eric Dollard and um, yeah, there's a lot of similarities and a lot of interesting things with this particular setup. The gyroscopic effect of the dual gyroscopes also um, creates a, a twin etheric uh, vortex, um, which is, um, well, the, the ether is, uh, well, it sets up a momentum, an etheric momentum that um, remains even after you shut the device off. The, uh, the twin um, rotating momentums uh, of inertia within the ether continue for a time, and this has been documented uh, 
multiple studies where, um, like in one case, they spun up a large uh, magnetic gyroscope and then they measured how much electricity it took to spin it up. And then they stopped it and then started it up again. And it only took about 10% of the same amount of electricity to get it to the, to the same speed. So, but, but they found if they waited uh, longer than a few minutes, then that effect would not um, result. Uh, you would have to use the full amount of electricity again to spin it up to speed. So it shows that there's a, there's a hidden um, substance to uh, physical matter, something finer than you know, the smallest atoms or quarks or um, you know, uh, whatever is the smallest um, measurement. There's, there's a substance that permeates all physical matter, which is uh, the ultimate um, base level um, kind of reality substance. So, um, so yeah, so where am I going with this project? I don't really know. I'm just, uh, it's sort of just um, something I wanted to do for a while. Maybe I'll uh, advance it in some capacity later on. So to get it started, I have to kind of um, push both of them in a counter um, directional way like this. There we go. So I'll just yeah, show you. So yeah, the inner gyroscope, as you can see, uh, spins a lot faster than the outer one. It's got less um, mass. And um, yeah, I don't know how fast to let it go. I mean, it's only glue gunned together, so it's not really, um, it might fly apart in other words. <laughs> so yeah, there you have it. Um, I'll just turn it off now. I'll try to give you some better shots first. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. It sounds like it's still accelerating slowly. So yeah, it's a simple uh, pulse motor. I've got, um, I've rigged up a commutator system. It's basically two, uh, two slip rings on, on the bottom. One goes through this uh, brass. Okay, so uh, there's two slip rings on the bottom connected to the first uh, outer gyroscope. The, um, there's one connection to this brass tube and the other connection is to a, um, a washer that's glued to the bottom. And then the commutator system up here is, um, okay, so the three coils, they all pulse at the same time right when the uh, the magnet here is right beside the uh, the coil. So there's a, a brief pulse of repulsion which um, pushes the inner ring this way and then the outer one in the opposite direction a little bit. So, and the commutator system is pretty simple. Like one of the uh, wires connects to the, um, the washer slip ring and then the other wire, I set up this, uh, a fairly primitive um, commutator system. It's just two wires, two wires, and then there's a vertical piece of copper that connects, like bridges the, the wire as it turns around. And I got it timed so that each time, um, it pulses, it's right when the magnet is where it's supposed to be, if you know what I mean. So yeah, uh, pretty simple. Um, so what I want to do 
what the plan is is to reinforce it with um, epoxy glue because right now I've just used um, glue from a glue gun and, and that's not very strong. So with epoxy glue, I can I can reinforce it all so that it can spin at a much faster speed. And then what I plan to do is uh, basically get it at a high speed, get it spinning fast enough so that there's a gyroscopic effect that takes place. And then what I might want to try to do is have the thing uh, balance on the bottom here. Uh, and yeah, and that's pretty much it. So what is... Um, what is the point of this? Well, I don't know. It's just kind of an experiment. Maybe, maybe it's just a toy, and I could like sell a, sell uh, a later version for fun. Uh, I don't know. I've just never seen a gyroscope that um, was self-propelled. This component here is crucial for the rotational stability, as you can see. I do not regret that others have stolen my ideas, rather that they have none of their own. Quaid, start the reactor. Free Mars. It is your destiny.